What's up? Like the hair? Over the holidays, I went on a trip to visit my family in Shanghai, and one of the last things I did there was visit the one person I trust to do crazy things with my head. She did an amazing job as always, and I mean, I think I've gotten better at taking care of this as well because、uh, it's been a month and. It still exists. So, life update: I am still enjoying not really looking for work at the moment, which is one of the reasons why I can keep this whole look going. But also, possibly once I do start the job hunt, maybe this could be some kind of culture fit check. Like, ideally, whatever office I would end up stepping into would find experimenting with hair color kind of awesome, or at least not a sign that I'm not good at my job. Anyways, it's been a while since I've talked about spring festival stuff on here. I spent the last couple of years working for China-themed companies, so around this time I would get swept up doing projects for them. But I'm a free agent right now, with a lot more time to wander around New York City during the entire month of February when something Chinese New Yearish is happening. And so maybe YouTube gets to see a little bit of it. And I'm starting out the celebration season, and it really. Is a season. I mean, New Year's technically is on February 10th, but the celebrations are supposed to stretch out until around the 24th, with pre-pre New Year's Eve happy hour for this fun little social club that I run the New York chapter of called Young China Watchers. We're all about connecting people who are interested in getting to know what's going on in, or just chatting about the most populous nation on the earth, the second largest. Economy in this now multipolar world. I started hosting speaker events for them last year, and we've covered things like creative censorship and feminism, and how China uses its sovereign funds as a global diplomatic tool. Plus, every now and then we just hang out and drink, and tonight is one of those hang out and drink nights. So I'm gonna go off to that. The event tonight was located in a bar in Chinatown, and I'm leaving my house early so that I could get a little shopping done. Mainly, I'm looking for decorations. Unsurprisingly, for what I guess is an ethnic holiday here, there's not really much you can buy for Chinese New Year's at, say,、uh, Target. All the good stuff is still almost exclusively in Chinatown. I got myself a few small things, nothing major. But the Year of the Dragon is supposed to be an auspicious and energetic one, and I feel like I ought to do a little more this time to invite that kind of energy. Into my life than what I did last time, which was absolutely nothing. The bar we chose to host the happy hour at is Mr. Fong's, an elevated dive located on Market Street. It's stylish but not too fancy. Decently priced drinks, but they still take credit cards. And the bartenders are chill. People started coming in around 6:30ish, and well. When I started heading up YCW New York while still at my China-centric last job, I kept on wondering if I'd start feeling a little China overloaded. Now that it looks like my career is finally veering into another direction, though, it's nice to be able to maintain some tie to current events there through this side gig hustle. I'm not really sure what to call it. Did you know that cleaning, sweeping, taking out the trash, etc., is supposed to be done before the New Year festivities start? I cut it pretty close this year by doing it on New Year's Eve, but well, look at the state of my house. I've been trying to reorganize my life all January, and I guess part of reorganizing involves taking all the stuff out of your doom boxes and then、um, trying to figure out where they should go instead, and that gets messy. The reason you shouldn't clean on New Year's Day is because apparently you had already cleaned out the bad luck, and good luck is supposed to arrive and replace it tonight on the stroke of midnight. If you sweep up or throw away anything on the first day of the year, you're going to sweep up and throw away that good luck with it. You're also not supposed to wash. Your hair, apparently, because I guess good luck also hides in your hair. The Chinese language homonym for hair is to prosper, so you'd be washing your good luck prosperity away. And now that the cleaning's done, let's put up some decorations. I got a cute little lamp, some chunlian, basically a couplet-style poem of well wishes, sort of like if you string up the words "Merry Christmas" somewhere in your house, but、uh, it's a tad more literary. And a fu sign for my door. Basically, this is like a wreath, but I'm telling the gods I want fortune, baby. Give me money, please. I beg you. Hey, 
doesn't look half bad, hey? So usually the big celebration would be tonight, New Year's Eve, and we're supposed to eat ourselves into a stupor while watching a spring festival gala before setting off a bunch of fireworks at midnight. I used to actually catch the spring festival gala on TV when I was in China. Yes, it's for my numbing hours long, but it was always good for a spectacle and for at least one unintentional laugh. I hear this year's delivered on those fronts as well. But I'm in New York now, so we're going to do spectacle the New York way. My friend Kim and I met up in Brooklyn, where we drank ourselves into a stupor while watching Bark of Millions, a four and a half hour long rock opera meditation on queerness. Hey, the immigrant experience is all about improvisation and if bright colors and loud celebrations of community is what Chinese New Year's is all about anyway, I think we nailed it. Going to lie, might have nailed it a little too hard the night before because for the life of me, I could not bring myself to leave the house the day after. I did cook a Chinese New Year themed meal though, so let's talk about it. There's a lot of auspicious themed foods for just about any Chinese holiday. A roast is never just a roast. I'm making a small feast for me and a friend and it's going to consist of noodles, which symbolize longevity, bok choy or bai cai, the name can mean a hundred types of fortune, Dumplings, which look like ingots, which are money, and I need money. Please, I beg you. If I was actually cooking a banquet dinner, these dumplings would be homemade, but bao jiao zi has always been a group activity in my family, and it's kind of lonely doing it just for myself. I hadn't planned on cooking a fish, but then my friend brought one over, so I guess this year I can also wish you all a nian nian you yu, which means may you have abundance year after year. How about that? There wouldn't be much of a cooking video here if I was just making noodles and dumplings, but now that we have something to actually process, I'll show you how I do it. It's pretty easy. First, we need spring onions, ginger, and garlic. I slice spring onions and garlic into thin slivers, and this will be going into the belly of the fish, which hopefully has already been gutted. I also slice garlic into coin-like shapes and do a corresponding amount of ginger in that same shape. Do you see how I'm cutting little slits into the fish's body? That's where the coin, ginger, and garlic will go. Next is sauce prep. Soy sauce, cooking wine, chinkown vinegar, and sesame oil. I kind of wing it here because that's just how Chinese people cook. Taste it, and if it tastes right, you'll be fine. Dice up some garlic, ginger, and spring onion to throw in there, and then set it aside. Don't put it on the fish yet. Steam the fish for 15 minutes. You really don't need more than that. I don't have a rig set up in my kitchen, and trying to transport that big old fish into my makeshift steamer wok because I also don't have a wok lid took some careful finagling so you don't get to see that, but it's in there. And as it was steaming, I made everything else. Traditionally, this is the day you'd go to greet your family and relatives and give each other presents. For instance, red envelopes filled with money for any of the unmarried kids. While it's a little sad that I'm not around a lot of family this year, I guess I'm both saving myself money and the embarrassment of explaining to at least a dozen older relatives why I still have not been wed. I've learned just to tell those people that I'm, um, kind of yunfen, trusting in fate. The concept of a woman not caring very much about marriage or having kids is usually a couple levels up in learnings about feminism, and it isn't a particularly great entryway for the noob into the topic of our long struggle for equality. But hot tip, if you want to start somewhere with teaching feminism to your Chinese relatives, the way to begin is actually a lot easier if you start with, did you know they didn't let women control money? Back to the fish. Heat up that sauce you made and pour it on. Oh shoot, I almost forgot about the kumquats. Kumquats symbolize prosperity. We made them into a kumquat gin fizz. Nothing like chilling at the house to re-energize you for another day of socializing. And kind of uncharacteristically for me, I decided to start out Sunday with a run at the gym. Day two of New Year's is called In-Laws Day, or the day you go and visit the wife's family. As mentioned before, I am nobody's wife. 
but I did have some women-centric things planned. An afternoon tea and scones with a bunch of my fellow neighborhood ladies at this cute little place called Alice's Teacup. It's not really Chinese New Year themed, I guess, but so many big events are happening at the same time this year. The Super Bowl and Valentine's Day. This was considered a Galentine's and it was lovely. In a neighborhood as big as Manhattan, when you're past your partying prime, it can be hard to find new friends, but the opportunities are out there as long as you can push yourself out the door for them. Well, not that I'm completely sure I'm past my partying prime. I'd gotten an invite to a Lunar New Year party thrown by this Chinese American art boutique called Chop Sui Club, which, in their words, curates a reconciliation of China's storied past and optimistic future in the present. They call it retrofuturism, and you can see that Y2K aesthetic everywhere. I've been to several of their events since I've come back here, and well, hanging with this very obviously Gen Z crowd does make me feel a little old, but I try to remind myself that when I I was in my early 20s, I don't think I ever hated on anyone older just enjoying the vibe. So I try to keep that in mind these days for all the times I still want to groove out even though it's harder and harder to find someone my age who wants to join me. Anyway, this is what the celebrations in New York look like. Monday, tomorrow is going to be the day of the rat, my day, and also one of the most unlucky days of the celebration, where you shouldn't leave the house because it is a day to get into arguments. My completely wild and unresearched guess is that people probably just needed a break from other people and so our ancestors cleverly built that in. And so I too will follow in their steed and end this vlog before we get there. I had a fun New Year's this year. I hope you did too and see you next time doing whatever it is I'm doing for the rest of the Year of the Dragon. Mm -hmm.